everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to replace the thermostat in a second generation Dodge Ram 1500. Uh, in this case, it's my 2001 uh, with a 5.9 liter eight cylinder gas engine. Although I believe the process would be the same for the 4.7 liter V8 as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am doing this because my thermostat housing is leaking. Uh, but if you are having issues with your truck overheating, uh, you could have a stuck thermostat um, or, you know, you just may want to replace your thermostat on a regular basis. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and dig into it. Um, first thing I've done is disconnected the battery. You can just disconnect the negative battery terminal, uh, battery cable from the terminal. Um, in my case, I was cleaning up the, both the battery cables because they had a lot of corrosion. So I went ahead and pulled the battery out. And the nice thing about that is that the battery tray serves as kind of a nice uh, bin for holding uh, bolts and nuts and tool, hand tools while you're working in here. Um, the next thing we need to do is to uh, go ahead and drain the coolant from the radiator, uh, which we will do below the vehicle um, through the uh, petcock at the bottom of the radiator. So let me reposition and we'll work on that next Okay, I actually decided I'm going to attack this from above So I'm standing on the driver's side of the vehicle obviously And if you look down by the washer fluid reservoir at the side of the radiator You can see the drain petcock right there. So we need to loosen that that's running it counterclockwise. And you can see I've just got a, uh, a funnel wedged in down there. Um, and underneath I've got a catch basin and a uh, container to catch the coolant as it drains. Don't let this run all over your driveway because if you've got pets, they may come lick it and it's toxic to them. So, um, or toxic to anybody. So don't let, don't let it hit the ground. Um, and clean up if you do spill. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and loosen that and let the coolant drain out. Then we'll move on to disassembling everything. Be right back. Okay, you can see the coolant draining out. Uh, one important thing that I forgot to mention, um, it should go without saying, but I just want to make sure I mention it. Um, if you've driven the vehicle recently, make sure you let it cool off, obviously, before you drain this. You don't, you don't want to be working with scalding hot coolant. Um, so make sure the vehicle sits a while before you drain it. Anyway, I'm going to let this finish draining while I work on other, th other things. So uh, let's move along. All right, so the radiator finally stopped draining. Um, I've put the petcock back in there. And so now I need to think about what order I want to do things in. Ultimately, we're going to have to remove... Uh, both of the uh, the AC compressor and the alternator um, as well as the upper radiator hose because that runs down to the thermostat housing and to make things simpler I'm going to remove the air intake hose as well as the air filter housing so I think I'm going to start with that so we need to move around here to this side and we need to remove the 5 sixteenths um, or I'm sorry, loosen the 5 16 nut here on this band clamp. Once it's loose, uh, this will wiggle free. Before I do that, I want to pull this hose back. This is the stock hose that I've just wrapped in duct insulation. I try to keep it from getting any warmer from the engine compartment. So that's loose. <clears throat> you can pull this breather hose free. And now come back over here and we're going to loosen that and remove the air filter housing. Let me get that loose and I'll be right back. Okay, I've just about gotten this loose enough to where we can remove the air filter housing. Again, you don't actually have to, this is not a bolt that you remove, it's just a ring clamp or a band clamp. So I'm just going to loosen it to relieve the, the tension. And we should be able to wiggle this free. I might need to loosen it a little bit more. There we 
go. Now we can set that out of the way. And next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the upper radiator hose, which is just going to entail removing this spring clamp here. You may have a band clamp. I've got this stock spring clamp. Um, just be aware there's probably going to be a little bit of coolant left in that line, so just have some sort of catch basin under there uh, to catch any runoff when you pull it, pull it loose. Let me get this off and we'll move along. Okay, I've got the spring clamp loose on that hose. You, if it's been a while since you've removed this, you may have to slide a screwdriver or something carefully under there. You don't want to puncture the hose, but if it's stuck on there good, you may have to break that seal with another tool. Mine was loose. Uh, I had to make a repair not too long ago where the hose split. Uh, it was during the winter, and all I had time to do at the time was uh, stick a piece of uh, threaded pipe inside and clamp it down. I'm going to replace this hose during this repair, but anyway, we can slide this off. Again, there may be some coolant left in here. I've got a little bit, so I'm going to angle this down with both hands and drain the rest out, but for the time being, if you're once you drain it out, you can kind of just tuck it out of the way, maybe back there like that, so we can remove the other components. Let me drain that out. And then the next thing we need to do is remove the serpentine belt so that we can get the AC compressor and the alternator loose. I'll be right back. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, need to do as I said, is remove the serpentine belt. Um, the first thing you want to do is take note of the routing. Um, if you have AC, then obviously the belt's going to loop over the AC. If you don't have AC, uh, I believe you can get a shorter belt to bypass this, uh, although I've also seen a bracket that bolts on in place of the AC compressor with a pulley on it. Uh, but the diagram here on the uh, radiator support uh, shows you the, the belt routing, so make sure you take note of that. Um, to get the belt loose, we need to put a socket in a long wrench on this nut on the uh, tensioner pulley and crank it clockwise this way um, which is going to release the tension in the belt and you can probably grab it with your hand and pull it off the alternator pulley. Uh, now I've got an extendable socket wrench um, that helps uh, to, to have a longer wrench to get uh, more mechanical advantage on this because it is the uh, tensioner pulley does have quite a bit of uh, spring tension in it. So uh, if you got a little short stubby wrench, it's going to be difficult to do this. Um, in my case, this requires a 15 millimeter socket. So you want to fit that on there and then crank like that. And you can see it released the tension in the belt. I'm going to need my other hand uh, free to grab the belt off that pulley, but you can see how that works. So let me get the belt off. Then we'll work on the um, AC compressor. I'll be right back. Okay, we've got the belt pulled loose from both the alternator and the AC compressor pulleys. I've just kind of let the belt rest down there below. Uh, so now we need to uh, remove both of these components. I'm going to tackle the AC compressor first um, just because it's got lines crossing over top of the alternator. So I want to get these out of the way. First. Now the nice thing about this is because these lines are flexible, you can actually remove the mounting bolts on the compressor and keep the lines connected and just swing the entire thing off to the side and rest it over here, uh, which is great. That way you don't have to uh, open the AC system and uh, recover the refrigerant and then recharge it. So <clears throat> uh, before we can do any of that, there are two electrical connections we need to remove. One is here and it's got this little safety retainer, this red tab. You need to push that uh, up in this orientation. I don't know if I can do it with one hand, but yeah, there you go. You can see how that tab slid up. Now we can pull this apart. Uh, probably going to need two hands to do that, but once the tab's loose, you just pull each half apart from each other. The other connection is here right there and if I remember correctly you squeeze this 
on the back side. There you go. So you push in with your finger against that and pull down. That'll come loose. Let me get this loose and then we can tackle the mounting bolts. I believe there are five half inch bolts. One here, one here, one there, one there, and one there. Um, I think we can actually leave this one and that one connected. So I think if we just take that loose, as well as the two bolts in the front, that bracket right here will just come with the compressor, if I remember correctly. We're going to try that first and see. It's been a while since I've fiddled with this thing. So let me get those pulled loose and we'll see what happens. Okay, one thing I did want to point out really quick that I didn't mention uh, on this connection for the AC clutch is you once you remove the, or once you slide the red tab over, you do have to squeeze on the back side of this side of the connector. You squeeze in with your, your finger and pull apart and the halves will separate. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that onto the mounting bolts. Okay, so my memory was incorrect there. Uh, you do end up having to remove all five of those bolts. Uh, and there's two here, two in the back, and then one back here on the bracket. So this one's a short one. The others are quite long because they go all the way through the compressor. So I've got all those loose, and as you can see now, the compressor moves. So I'm going to pull the rest of those bolts all the way out, and using two hands, I'm going to have to lift this up and sneak it under these wires to try to pull it forward and clear the uh, fan shroud, and then we're going to lay the whole thing over here. So if I can somehow rig my camera up here, uh, and do that with two hands, I will do that and try to show the process. Be right back. Okay, before we remove the compressor, I almost forgot, there is one more nut that we need to remove. I've already loosened it. Um, you can see it right here. It's on the back side of the refrigerant lines. And it holds down this retaining clip that keeps the refrigerant lines from moving around. So that's a 9 16 Just need to finish taking that off. Now we'll be able to lift the compressor up with the lines. So let me get my camera in position for that. I'll see if I can show you that process. All right, so I've got my camera propped up now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab these wires with one hand and pull them back. And I'm gonna grasp the refrigerant lines with my other hand and lift up and forward. And now we are loose. I can just pick the whole thing up and then gently lay it over on the wheel well on the other side, like that. And like I said earlier, because these are flexible, that gives us the freedom to do this. Just make sure you don't kink the lines. All right, so now we've got the freedom to work on the alternator. Uh, let me take a look at this because I don't remember off the top of my head how many bolts we got to remove, and I'll be right back. All right, so we are ready to remove the uh, alternator now. So the first thing we need to do is there is a bracket that holds the uh, oil dipstick tube to the side of the alternator. So we need to remove this bolt right here. That's a half inch. And then we've got two electrical connections on the back side. We've got one with an actual squeeze connector here. Um, you need to squeeze on the back side like that and pull it back. And then the other one is a uh, like a spade connector. So we need to remove this bolt right there. Uh, that's a half inch bolt. There's also a, a sort of insulated cover that goes on this. You just squeeze on the tabs here like that and pull backwards to expose the nut. So we need to remove those first, and then we will work on removing the alternator itself. Uh, so let me get those connections removed and we'll move along. All right, so I've removed the 
bolt for the oil dipstick tube bracket and I've removed both of those electrical connections on the back side. Now we're ready to remove the alternator itself. Um, so as far as I can tell, there are two 916 bolts that hold it on. One down here that you can see I've already got a socket on and one right here up top. Now the lower bolt actually has, it passes all the way through and has a nut on the back side that I've got an opened end wrench on right now because you've got to hold the nut while you turn the bolt or else they're going to spin together. So you can see I've got a socket on one side and a nut on the other, I mean a wrench on the other. So we're going to remove those and then we should be able to pull the alternator out. I'll try to get a shot of that in the process. Let me get these bolts out of the way first. Okay, so while I was undoing those bolts, uh, I remembered that because this lower one actually bolts all the way through this bracket and front and back of the alternator attached to it, you can actually leave that one in, just loosen it, only remove the top one, and then you can actually just flip the alternator out of the way to expose the radiator housing down there. Doesn't that look pretty? So you actually don't have to completely remove the lower bolt, just take the upper one out and pull the radiator over. I mean, sorry, the alternator over. Um, and in hindsight, I probably could have left the, arc, the electrical connections. This one comes from the direction that we're moving the alternator in, so I definitely could have left that one. This one, yeah, I probably could have left it, but at least now I can tuck it out of the way. So anyway, last thing we need to do is get this bracket out of our way so that we can get down there to the radiator. I mean, gosh, sorry, the thermostat housing, which is gonna have two bolt connections. Uh, mine's obviously been leaking for a while. There's all sorts of nasty gunk down there. So let's get this last bracket out of the way. It looks like that's gonna be, I think these are 9 16 a nut and a bolt. So I'm gonna remove those, pull the bracket off, and then we'll just move some of these wires and the throttle cable out of the way as best we can and we'll get down there to the thermostat housing. Be right back. Alright so I've got that bracket out of our way and I've kind of pushed the throttle cable and um, transmission cable over and moved the alternator wire. Um, so we're ready to remove the spring clamp or hose clamp on the upper radiator hose right there where it attaches to the thermostat housing. Um, so I'm going to remove that which will give us better access to um, the bolts after we pull the hose off. So let me get this hose out of the way and I'll be right back. Okay so I've got the upper hose out of the way which gives us much better access to our bolts down there. Um, so I've been soaking these in penetrant for a while now. Um, once I could get access to them, I started spraying penetrant on them uh, just because they've been bathing in a, in a bath of coolant for however long this has been leaking. And I really don't want them to shear off. I'm worried that they're pretty rusted on there. So we're gonna give this a shot, but uh, each one of those bolts is half inch. Again, you've got, you've got one there and one here. So we need to remove those and then that'll expose the thermostat, which you can see the top of it right there. Uh, and we can take the old thermostat out. So uh, cross your fingers. Let me see if I can get these out without snapping them off. Okay, well, I got really lucky. Uh, either the penetrant did its job or those bolts just weren't really that tight or weren't rusty because they came right out without a fight, thankfully. So now our housing is loose. We can pluck it out of here, hopefully. And there's our old thermostat, which if I can reach down here and film at the same time, I'll pull that out like so. All right. So that pretty much concludes the disassembly portion. Now I just need to clean up that mess down there and get ready to put everything back together. So let me regroup and we'll start working our way back out of here.
be right back. All right, so before we put everything back together, we need to, to do a little bit of cleanup. Um, you can see here's the old housing. I've wiped it down a little bit already, um, but I need to finish cleaning it. And uh, the gasket, so when this was installed last time, the mechanic had used a paper gasket. Uh, it came off with the housing. It thankfully did not stick to the intake down there. Uh, so I just need to finish cleaning the res gasket residue off of here. Make sure this is nice and clean, ready to go back on. Um, I might even have a new housing laying on the shelf, and if I do, I'll just use that instead of cleaning this. Um, otherwise, I'll just clean this up and make it ready to go. Uh, I need to also clean the mating surface down here, which I'll probably try to gently use a uh, screwdriver or something. You, you don't want to score the metal, but you want to get any gasket residue or gunk off there, so we've got a nice seal with our new gasket and then I'm going to try to clean up some of this other uh, build up from the, the leak um, now when I go back with the new thermostat and housing I think I'm going to use a liquid like silicone RTV gasket this time um, so the leak doesn't happen because the last two times I've uh, changed the thermostat I did one myself and then uh, I had the truck in the shop um, another time and they put a new thermostat in and it's leaked both times so uh, I'm sick of sick of the coolant leak so I'm gonna use a silicone this time and hopefully that'll solve my leak problem all right let me clean this up and we'll start putting things back together okay so I have cleaned up the mating surface down here the best that I can looks a lot better than it did um, I ended up using an old toothbrush and some brake cleaner and then a little uh, flat razor scraper like that. You want to be careful with this so you don't uh, gouge the metal surface, but that did a pretty good job of getting off any old uh, gasket residue that I had on there. And I've cleaned up the thermostat housing pretty well. Um, got off most of the old residue off the bottom of that, so it should be clean enough to reinstall now. Um, so before I Put the new thermostat in and put everything back together i think i'm going to try to flush out the engine block with water um just because i don't remember the last time i had a coolant flush and you saw what that nasty old coolant looked like on the outside you don't want the inside of your coolant passages in your uh engine block looking like that either so um, i think i'm going to of course i'll pull this rag out here that i had to catch any debris And then I'm going to put the thermostat housing back on without the thermostat. And I'll just temporarily bolt it in place. It doesn't have to be super tight. And then I'll reinstall the upper radiator hose that attaches here. Um, and then I will take all, disconnect the lower radiator hose, which you can see, if I can get my hand down here, I'll point to it right there. And get a catch basin and aim that hose into the catch basin and then we will flush um, through this upper radiator hose through the engine block with some just with some water and uh, try to flush out any debris or gunk that's inside there so let me get all that into place and um, I'll give a quick shot of the flush procedure and then we'll start putting things back together all right, so I've got the thermostat housing bolted back into place temporarily without the thermostat. And you can see I've shoved the upper radiator hose back on top of it. I didn't hose clamp it. Uh, you really don't need to for this. And then I've got it, my garden hose shoved into the other end of the upper radiator hose. And underneath, as I mentioned, I've disconnected the lower radiator hose. You can see the radiator outlet there and I've zip tied the hose to uh, to the body the, or the frame of the truck um, with a couple of funnels going into a uh, container and a catch basin so I'm, all I need to do is turn the water on now and it'll flush out the engine block um, I'll probably do I don't know a couple gallons of water um, so let me start 
uh, flushing and I'll show you some of the water running through and then we'll move on. All right, so you can hear the water flowing now. And you can see it starting to fill up my basin down here. All right, now that we've flushed the engine block, I'm gonna do the same thing with the radiator itself. So I've taken the upper radiator, upper radiator hose and reattached it to the upper radiator inlet. Um, and I've got my garden hose shoved in that end. And I got a bucket under the lower radiator outlet right there to catch whatever runs out. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and flush this. And then I think I'm also gonna do the heater core um, just to make sure I hit every component of the system and then we'll put everything back together. All right, so you can see the water running out of the radiator now. So I'm gonna flush this for a while and then we'll move on to the heater core. All right, so I finished flushing the radiator and now I'm gonna move on to flushing the heater core. Uh, which is actually inside the dash and that's what gives you heat inside the cab. You've got two hoses One here And one here that deliver coolant to the heater core And circulate it through there. You see the hoses going into the firewall right back there uh, and So the heater core is in the dash and the HVAC system directs um, air over the heater core when you have the uh, temperature setting set to heat. The blend door will divert air over the heater core which has got warm or hot coolant flowing through it and that's how you get warm air inside the cab. Um, so while I've got everything apart I want to go ahead and flush this too so I'm going to disconnect both of those lines. I'll disconnect this one here and the other one I've actually got, I had a split in mine at one time, so I have a coupling right here that I'm going to disconnect. Otherwise, uh, you need to disconnect it here beside the thermostat housing. That hose comes here um, to the intake manifold. So I'm going to disconnect those and rig up uh, the garden hose and a catch basin and flush some water through there. I'll show that briefly and then we'll finally start putting things back together. All right, so I've got the hoses disconnected. I actually got my garden hose duct taped to this side because I didn't have any good fittings to uh, actually make a mechanical connection. Uh, hopefully this will work. It's not the best way to do it obviously, but make do with what you got. Uh, the other side is disconnected and routed into this container uh, to catch the run out. So now all I need to do is turn on my garden hose and start flushing. So let me get to that next. All right, so I'm running water through it now. Obviously, as I said, the duct tape's not the best method because I've got some leaks, but I am getting water in a container down here. So I'm gonna run, I don't know, two or three containers full of water through the heater core and then call it good. All right, I've finished flushing everything. I've got the hoses reassembled here. And on this side, I've got the lower radiator hose installed down there. Now we're ready to finally put the new thermostat and housing in. So I've got my new thermostat here. It's gonna go in just like this. You just drop it down into place. The spring side goes down like that. And now if you're using a paper gasket, you would just place the paper gasket in place and then set the housing down over the top. My housing's got this little tab on one side and that's gonna have to go facing the front of the vehicle. If you spin it around, it's gonna hit the intake manifold. So it goes in like that. And then we bolt it down. Now I'm not gonna use a paper gasket as I mentioned earlier because I've had failures the last two times I've used a paper gasket. So I'm going to use some RTV made by Permatex. It's called the Right Stuff. 
Um, and the nice thing about this particular kind is that uh, you don't have to wait for um, a long time before you refill the truck with coolant. Um, there's some other gaskets, RTV gaskets, that you have to wait like 24 hours or 12 hours. This says, let's see, symbol parts within five minutes. Uh, somewhere around here it says you can refill immediately with coolant. So that's great. That'll get me back and up and running quickly. Um, so let me get this opened up and dispense it onto the bottom of the housing and then we're going to set this in place and torque it down. All right, so you can see I've applied the silicone to the bottom of the thermostat housing and I'm ready to drop it into place. Now, I went ahead and, and dropped a, um, you can see right there, a bolt with no head on it that I had from a previous repair. To use as sort of an alignment stud. It's loose, it's not the same thread, so I'll be able to just pull it straight up. But the idea is to drop the uh, open, the bolt hole in the thermostat housing over that to align me, that I can set it in place, then I can install the other bolt. So I'm going to try to film this if I can. Uh, if I can give you a good angle here. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to position the camera where you can really see what I'm doing, but probably as good as it's going to get. So, got the housing again. This tab needs to face the front of the vehicle. And I think, the actually if you look at the housing from the side, that's because the, the tube is actually angled in one direction. That angle needs to face the front of the vehicle. Alright, so I'm going to drop it into place. Give it a little bit of pressure. That alignment stud helped a lot. Now I've got a extendable magnet that I can use to start the other bolt into the hole. And once the threads start, I can use my socket with an extension to run it down finger tight. Then, hopefully I can pull this other stud out. Like that. Then I can put the other bolts in with my magnet. that once it starts do the same thing drop my extension down finger tighten that All right, now we can use a torque wrench to torque those down. The service manual says uh, 200 inch pounds. So I've got my torque wrench set to that. That one's tight. That one's tight, check them both again. Excellent. All right, so that part is done. Thermostat is now bolted down. And you can see the gasket breezed out a little bit. So now we can reassemble everything in reverse order. I'll start working on that now. Okay, so I've installed my new radiator hose onto the thermostat housing and put a new hose clamp on there, tighten it down. 
We've got the hose out of the way so we can work on the alternator and AC condenser. Now we're ready to flip the alternator back over, reinstall this bolt, tighten the nut on the lower bolt, reinstall the bracket on the engine oil dipstick, and then make up the two electrical connections, one here and one here. So I'm gonna do that next, and we'll work on the uh, AC compressor. Okay, I've got the alternator reinstalled and the connections made up, uh, except for, let's see, this one. There we go. Now I can reinstall the alternator bracket right here. There's a bolt in the back and a stud with a nut on it in the front. I'm going to put those in and work on the AC compressor. All right, so I've got the alternator bracket installed completely. Now we're ready to work on the AC compressor. So I'm ready to swing it back over into place. Lift up everything out of the way. And set it back in place. There we go. So again, there are uh, five, four long bolts. Let's see, one, two, three. And last one is right there by my finger. And there's a bracket goes on and there's a short bolt that connects the bracket to there. So I'll reinstall those and then we're down to just a few more steps. Be right back. Okay I've got the AC compressor bolted down, brackets reinstalled in the back, and I've swung my upper radiator hose back in place now and I'm ready to reinstall it onto the radiator, like so, you need two hands to do that, but I'll tighten that hose clamp down, and then um, I realized I forgot the AC compressor bracket nut right there, so I'll tighten that, and then we can put the air filter housing and intake hose back on. And then we're ready to refill the radiator after that. So real, real close. Okay, I'm ready to install the air filter housing now. So the housing's got this rubber grommet with a hole in the center on the bottom of it. That's going to align with this stud right there. So we need to set the housing in place on top of that. And then we also need to get the ring clamp to seat around uh, the throttle body. It's got a hook on the bottom side. So it can be a little bit tricky, but there's a notch. Let's see if I can show this on camera. There's a notch right there in the ring clamp that lines up with this little tab. Uh, that'll tell you if you've got the the ring clamp aligned properly. Alright, so and this camera angle is probably not great, but I've got the alignment stud into the grommet. I feel like I've got the ring clamp hooked under the bottom edge. So I just need to check the other side. We can retighten the 5 16 screw right there. Uh, and then all, the only thing we have left is uh, a breather hose and the air intake hose. Be right back. Okay, the air filter housing is firmly installed. You can see the band clamp is hooked under the throttle body on the back side as well as the other side and the band clamp is tight. So now we've got a breather hose here 
that needs to get reinstalled right there. And we've got the air intake hose itself, which comes out of the hole in the fender wall there. Like that. And then just hooks right there. So everything's reassembled now. Now we just need to refill the cooling system. So we're going to open the radiator cap. We're going to add coolant until it fills up. And then we're going to start the truck and we're going to continue to add coolant uh, until the level no longer drops. And then the best thing to do to bleed the air out is to park the truck with the front end on a slight incline and let it continue to run for, I don't know, 10-15 minutes with the heat on. That should circulate water through the entire system. Um, once the truck gets up to operating temperature, it should open the thermostat and water should flow through everywhere. Uh, and then if there's any air bubbles, hopefully with the radiator being at the front of the vehicle and the front of the vehicle being on an incline, uh, all the air will try to escape here from the radiator cap hole. So. I'm going to go ahead and fill her up and let it run for a while and we'll finally wrap up this project. Okay, I've refilled the radiator up to the top with a mixture of 50% coolant and 50% water. Um, so we're ready to start the truck, but I realized I forgot to mention, before you started, make sure you reinstall the serpentine belt. And again, this is just the opposite procedure of how we removed it, but we've got a 15 millimeter socket and a wrench on the tensioner pulley bolt. That'll allow you to move the tensioner over and you can grab the belt. And with one hand on the wrench, you can use the other hand to loop it over the alternator pulley. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna start the truck and try to bleed some of the air out through the radiator cap opening. All right, so obviously I have the truck running and I've got a funnel stuck into the upper radiator, I mean into the radiator cap opening see the level has dropped so I'm just going to continue to add coolant until uh, I can't add any more and I'll let it run for a while and then the level will probably drop more as more air bleeds out and I'll just repeat that process over the course of 10 or 15 minutes um, and hopefully eventually the, all the air will be blood from the system um, again I've got the heat on in the cab um, so once the truck gets up to operating temperature uh, the coolant should cir circulate through the entire system and hopefully push any air out right here. So that wraps up this project. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I know it's probably been kind of a tedious video, but I wanted to show every step along the way just for anybody who's lacking the confidence uh, that they can do this. You absolutely can. It's not a hard job. Um, you know, just give yourself an afternoon and you could probably do it in between two and three hours if you just stick to it. So anyway, um, I hope it's been helpful. Thank you for watching.